So thanks for checking out the video. Today we're talking about this, the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. It's, uh, this is a, a cardboard box. Just kidding, this is the Torpedo Captor X. It's, uh, I've only had about a month at the time of this recording and I got it when I moved into the new space here and I didn't have the space to leave guitar amps mic'd and set up all the time and uh, now I can uh, crank up the amps and not bother my neighbors as much. But it's not just for reamping guitars and uh, for recording, it's also for practicing and playing. It's, uh, it's great to play with, it, it feels natural, uh, I've enjoyed it so far. So I'm going to take you through my first impressions of it out of the box and then we'll take a little bit deeper dive on a couple of things. So what is it? It's a load box. It's a, a IR loader. It's a virtual cabinet. And if you're watching this video, you probably already might know what a load box is. Um, and if you don't, the basic rundown of it is uh, tube amps, valve amps, the rare solid state amp need a load when you turn them on, an electrical load. And if you don't uh, have an electrical load, you release the blue tone smoke and you'll never get it back. If this is something new for you, I recommend checking out some other videos on YouTube. There's some people out there who have explained it way better than I could, so I'll provide a link in the description below. And would I really be a YouTuber if I didn't say like, like and subscribe? Anyways, stick around a little later in the video for a pros and cons list, but here are my first impressions. My first impression when I took it out of the box is that it seems to be built like a tank. You know, it is made out of metal. You know, and it seems sturdy. I can't speak for the internal components, um, but it seems like it would withstand some rigors of the road. The, the next thing I notice is uh, I, the knobs are really nice. I, I don't know, I like good potentiometers, good encoders. The center one here is center indented, and then the, uh, the presets have uh, indents on them, and it makes a satisfying click, like... Anyways, so it seems like a well-traveling box. Uh, something that is a, very much a quality of life thing is that the everything is flush with the front here so you can set it down in a bag and it's not gonna mess up the knobs. They're not gonna be pressure on the knobs or anything on the back here. It's a, it's a, I've, I've, I like the design. One thing that I, I did notice kind of like right away is that it's got a, a 12 volt power supply and you know, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not an engineer, but an IEC would have been great. I'm just a consumer and a musician. Just another power supply to keep track of. So you've got the four knobs on the front and the input level select with your headphone output there. Uh, on the back, you've got the fan, which does come on and off. Uh, 2XLR male amplifier in, speaker output. You've got your attenuation switch and you've got a ground lift here. You've got an eighth inch jack for MIDI and remote control as well as a USB jack here. All right, so plugging this thing in and getting some sounds together. Uh, disclaimer, make sure that everything is plugged in because you don't want to release the blue tone smoke. And uh, I always check my signal chain before I use one of these just to be safe. I have the 16 ohm version. They do have different uh, ohm ratings for these. Uh, I have a 16 ohm amplifier, my Marshall, and uh, that's what I'll be using along with my Fender Twin today. So right out of the box, I liked what I was hearing. Obviously these are curated sounds, but I, you know, they do a great job. And I found myself not really wanting to go to the app to change any of the, uh, any of the uh, presets that much. I kind of switched between some here on the front and uh, I really liked it. When I opened up the software, I started playing with some of the different cabinets that are available. 2x15s, 4x12s, there's a microphone selection with different kind of microphone placement, different rooms and reverbs and EQ and a sonic maximizer enhancer thing. It all sounds really good and there are enough tools here to definitely sculpt a good sound in the recording phase or live. You know, it's a record like you can't mix and mix like you can't master, right? A great tool for a gigging artist and for reamping and recording as well as just playing and practicing. It's a, it's a well-rounded tool. So this is definitely going to make it to most gigs with me and it's got a permanent spot here in my studio and I'm excited to keep using it. So a quick pros and cons list before I get into some audio demos and uh, I'm gonna start with pros. I believe that this is well built. It's got a slick design. Uh, the you know things are protected by this flush front and back plate. Um, I believe that this is a sturdy box. It's got a small footprint. 
it can sit on top of an amp, it can sit in a bag, it can go sideways up against something and fit on a pedal board, I don't know. Like, it, it's it's not this huge, giant thing. I know there are some other uh, load boxes on the market that are just, like, massive, you know. The other thing is, it's easy to use. I mean, I plugged it in and turned it on and it worked. Um, I think I've uh, I hit the input level to low. The next thing is the app works. I've experienced stuff where the app just is trash and it never gets an update. The app was definitely a thought into the design of this and, and, and what makes it work. And so it's a, really, it's a nice pro. And the last thing, obviously, it sounds good. Like, it does sound really good. Stereo, mono, split mono, it's all good. And so cons. I'm gonna, as I get into the cons part of the here, I had to like sit here and think about it to come up with an adequately long like cons list. So note that take some of these with a grain of salt and that they're more of just like personal opinion and not really like a downfall or anything of the of the piece. You know, one of the first things that I mentioned is that it's got the, uh, the power here is a 12 volt and it's just like a whole another like cable and power supply thing that you have to keep track of. Not really that big of a deal. The fan, it's a little loud. In my experience, the box itself doesn't get that hot because of the fan problem. Okay, so the rest of this is, like I said, take these with a little bit of a grain of salt, more of just like a personal opinion. Didn't really come with a manual for tech specs or anything like that. Um, it did come with a setup and how to use it, but I would have it would have been nice to have a little bit more of an, uh, an in-depth of uh, like explaining things and having a little bit more explanation on the technical specifications of it, just because... I like having those things. The app disconnects frequently. I think that might be by design in case you're using multiple of them so you can switch between two of them easily, but I found that if I get through a whole song and my iPad goes to sleep and I have to open it, um, the app makes me re-input the code to find the device and, and connect to it. Uh, if you're playing live, that might be a little bit of a, something you have to plan for. And lastly, um, an effects loop would have been cool. However, there's not a lot of real estate on here for much more. Enough talk about it. Let's listen to it. I'm going to uh, play some examples that I recorded uh, with some mixes and some solo tracks, uh, some dirty guitars, some like heavy guitar, some clean guitar, and some solo stuff. I'm going to use a Les Paul, and I'm going to use a Strat for the various different ones. And I uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and let me know what you thought in the comment sections. If you want to catch more content like this, be sure to subscribe and as always, safe travels.